Hey there, Alex Kidman from Alex Reviews Tech here with a small thing of water. And I'm about to drop this iPhone into it. And you might think, well, that's nothing special whatsoever because we all know that iPhones are waterproof. This is not shocking or exciting in any way. Except that, well, for all those people thinking, well, yeah, iPhones and lots of other phones are waterproof, you're wrong. They're not. And I'm going to explain why that is and why it's really, really dangerous thinking. But first of all, I'd better get this phone out of the water. So a lot of people make the assumption that because they see water mentioned in the advertising somewhere for their fancy new $2,000 smartphone, that they can take it to the beach, they can throw it in the pool. It must be absolutely fine for all of these things, only to discover that post-swim, suddenly their $2,000 smartphone just won't turn on. And that's because they've just inadvertently drowned or shorted out their fancy new waterproof smartphone. And that's a really expensive mistake to make. And the primary mistake here largely is a misunderstanding between what a waterproof phone and a water-resistant phone are. And here we've got to get into some definitions. So what does waterproof mean? Well, the literal dictionary definition, and they do differ a little, but I'm going with the Oxford here, is as an adjective, meaning impervious to water. And if you want a fun little trivial fact, the earliest usage of waterproof dates back to the 1600s, so it's been around a lot longer than you might think. And for the sake of clarity, impervious means not able to be passed through or penetrated. So an item that is waterproof would not allow water to pass through it at all. A waterproof phone, therefore, would be one that was impervious to water passing through it and to the damaging effects of water as a result. Water resistant, on the other hand, is an adjective that means resistant to the adverse or damaging effects of water, not readily damaged, penetrated or removed by water. And these two are not interchangeable terms. Now, a waterproof phone is technically one that's water resistant and more, but a water resistant phone merely means that it has a level of resistance, not the impervious nature of a waterproof phone. And the odds are very, very good that if you buy a smartphone that has anything to say about water in its marketing, it will talk about being water resistant. And there's a whole standard IP ratings that relates to water resistance, which I'll explain in a second, but I may as well complete the trifecta first. Water repellent is actually the easiest term to understand. It means that it has some level of either coating or material property that works at some level to repel water. And for smartphones, and most tech gadgets actually, water repellent is basic table stakes. It typically doesn't really mean all that much. To give you an example, the front screen of this iPhone is water repellent. Now the iPhone itself is actually water resistant, but the front screen is water repellent because it doesn't absorb water like a sponge. It rolls off the screens. But in most cases, a phone that says it's water repellent will have little or no protection on ports or other areas to deal with water ingress. And it's that water ingress when the water gets into your phone where the bad stuff starts happening. Water repellent phone has no standards in play. It's largely a marketing term because there's no strictly defined parameters or coverage. Basically, a little light rain on the screen might be okay, but any moisture getting into the charging socket, speaker grill, or headphone socket, if it has one, could be ruinous. And this brings us on to IP ratings. So when you get a smartphone or any other gadget with any qualified level of water resistance, this involves lab testing, and I'll get onto that in a minute, it will come with what's called an IP rating for ingress protection. And that gives you a quick glance explanation of its likely protective status. Quick glance if you're au okay with IP ratings numbers, that is. Now, there's a couple of quick things to explain here. Firstly, if you see an IP rating and there's an X in either the first or second number, that means it has no tested capacity in that field whatsoever. You will sometimes see devices that are, for example, IPX6 or maybe IP6X. Strictly speaking, a completely untested device could be called an IPXX device, but practically speaking, nobody actually does that. The first number in an IP rating relates to dust ingress. And for the most part, with smartphones at least, you'll find that they tend to have a rating of either 5 or 6 in this category. 6 is the highest level, that means full dust ingress protection. Anything lower than 5 refers to merely blocking larger objects and insect ingress, which you don't want in a smartphone, but if they are rated at that level, you're basically talking about stopping an ant getting in, but sand, dust, and fine grit can get in quite easily. But that's dust, not 
water. Now, water ingress is covered by that second number with varying levels of water covered. Now, one to six are varying levels of dripping, spraying water, water jets going up in intensity. Once you get up to seven or eight or nine, you are talking about immersion with some relatively strictly defined parameters, but I will get into that in a minute as well. Those are the levels to which, in theory, a device can be immersed, that is dunked, dropped, splished, call it what you will, into water while expecting that water itself will not then get access to the internals to ruin them. So you might be thinking, well, cool, I've got an IP68 or IP69 rated phone. I'm good to go for all of my water adventures, pool diving, beach trips, scuba diving, whatever. No. No, really no, for a bunch of different reasons. Now, scuba diving, I'm going to leave aside for the moment, that involves serious depths and pressures for a start. But the pool example is a good one because it's one where a lot of Australians come a cropper. And the reason that they come a cropper, or the first reason, is because the big catch with IP ratings is that they have to be determined under lab conditions using pure lab water. Pure lab water is non-conductive for a start. And you might think, well, okay, maybe I'll just fill my pool with pure lab water and then I'll be good. Well, no, because even if you did that, it would quickly become contaminated with whatever's floating by in the air, leaves, skin cells, and all the other stuff that can turn pool water toxic rather quickly. And the solution, if you're a pool owner, and you already know this, is that to keep your pool healthy enough for you to swim in it, you liberally dose it with pool salts and chlorine and all those other interesting pool chemicals. And none of those are covered by standard IP ratings in any way at all. And most of those, because of the chemical nature of them, because of what they're actually trying to do to the water, are decidedly deadly for smartphone workings because their mix of acids and bases can work all too quickly to strip down the exact protections built into IP rated gadgets. And, and this is also critical, they most certainly will over a period of time, even if you did somehow have your pool full of pure lab water, over time, IP ratings degrade because water gets into everything. Water will wear down everything given enough time. Don't believe me? Head to a beach. All the sand there was originally a mountain, basically. Now, that's a very, very long time scale, longer than your smartphone will last. But the point is, IP ratings are not forever to start with. And of course, you're not better off with seawater either. Thanks to its heady mix of salts, industrial chemicals, sewage, bits of seaweed, and of course, all the other junk that we've polluted the oceans with over the last hundred odd years. Now, neither pool water nor beach water should be an absolute death sentence for a phone every time in every way, because you might be thinking to yourself, but I go swimming with my phone all the time, it's fine, and you're full of it, Alex. And look, I may be full of it from time to time. We're all fallible, you know. But the point here is that this kind of usage is risky, both in single instances, but especially over time. On the scuba diving front, by the way, for anyone who was curious, the other bit of wriggle room within the definitions relates to both depth and time, because it's a variable depending on the precise test parameters. And while those should be disclosed, they're typically only disclosed in the small print somewhere. And this is the other area where lots of consumers fall foul of the small print and what they presume a warranty will or won't cover. And I'll give you some specific examples here based on two of the most popular premium phones this year, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and the Apple iPhone 16. And both of those phones are IP68 rated. So you might think, right, well, I've got the same level of protection. Well, no, they don't. At least not according to Samsung and not according to Apple. You do have to dig a little bit down, and these are based on the Australian websites and what's up there as per those companies. At the time of recording this internationally, it might vary a little, but I very much doubt that it does because I don't think they're doing a whole bunch of individual country testing. It's just that their reporting might be different elsewhere. So the Galaxy S24 Ultra, for example, IP68, is stated as per Samsung as follows. Galaxy S24, S24 Plus, and S24 Ultra are rated as IP68 based on lab test conditions for submersion in up to 1.5 metres of fresh water for up to 30 minutes. Not advised for beach or pool use, water and dust resistance advice is not permanent and may diminish over time because of normal wear and tear. So they're backing up what I was saying about the IP ratings wearing out over time. However, Apple's definition of IP68 for the iPhone 16 is as follows. 
iPhone 16, iPhone 16 Plus, iPhone 16 Pro and iPhone 16 Pro Max are splash, water and dust resistant and were tested under controlled lab conditions with a rating of IP68 under IEC standard 60529, maximum depth of 6 metres for up to 30 minutes. Splash, water and dust resistance are not permanent conditions. Resistance might decrease as a result of normal wear. Do not attempt to charge a wet iPhone. Refer to the user guide for cleaning and drying instructions. Liquid damage not covered under warranty, but you might have rights under consumer law. So Samsung is very much covering itself there, noting that they're not suitable for beach or pool use, although that's not a surprise in Australia, for reasons I'll get into shortly. But their tests only covered the S24 Ultra to 1.5 metres, where Apple's statement is said to be good for depths up to 6 metres. So basically, Apple's got a much, much deeper testing pool. But in either case, to get back to your scuba divers, typical scuba diving depths go considerably deeper than this, so they would not be covered. And you might also note the legal disclaimers in both cases, which brings me to the question of what you do if you have drowned your waterproof phone. What are you covered for? What are you likely not covered for? Now, I must preface this by saying I'm not a lawyer. And what I'm about to say does not constitute legal advice, strictly speaking. I'm just a tech journalist who spent more than a few hours chatting about this stuff to lawyers and consumer rights advocates and similar people. That's all. So we've established that your waterproof phone isn't actually a waterproof phone, just an IP rated water resistant phone. But what if a manufacturer makes claims that suggests that it is or could be a waterproof phone? And here in Australia, again, I'm Australian based, sorry, this is not necessarily international advice. Australian consumer law may protect you if a manufacturer makes claims that suggest that, for example, pool or beach use is a typical usage scenario and your device fails when you use it in that way. And this is exactly why Samsung's water resistance claims in Australia specify not to use them at a pool or beach, by the way. Some years ago, Samsung ran ads that suggested a number of its phones could be used that way. You know, typical beach scenes of people having splashy fun on beaches with their Galaxy devices. And when people complained about all the dead Galaxy phones that ensued, the ACCC stepped in and slapped Samsung Australia with a $14 million fine for misleading consumers. The key here is around what a manufacturer says a device can or will do, which is why whenever I'm faced with an IP rated device, the first question I ask isn't about what the numbers mean, but about what their warranty says it covers and then the claims they're making around it. And honestly, not too many are willing to go down the beach advertising route for the exact reason that Samsung got stung for it. So, for example, earlier in the year, I tested out the Shox Open Swim Pro and I went to a briefing with Shox and I asked them this specific question about what their warranty covered. And to their credit, I got the following response. The Open Swim Pro headphones can be used in pools or salt water. Any issues encountered within the two year warranty period, including from use in salt water, are covered by the warranty policy. Salt water by its nature is more corrosive than pool water. So Shox recommends thoroughly rinsing in fresh water after exposure to salt water. And honestly, that is a lot more than you'll see in the warranty documents of most tech firms, though it does make sense for a product that so explicitly has swim in its name. And of course, there is interpretive wriggle room here too. So earlier in the year, for example, I took a GoPro Hero 12 Black with me to the Great Barrier Reef to actually do a proper water test. And let's face it, we've all seen a million GoPro underwater videos, surfing videos, videos that imply or suggest certainly, I suppose I shouldn't say that from a strict legal sense, but I think people know what I mean, videos that show people using them with water. And therefore you might think, well, they're GoPro, they're rugged cameras, they're, they're water resistant cameras, right? Well, the only warranty information that I can find relating to the Hero 12 Black states this. Because of possible user resealing errors, this product is not warranted against water housing leakage or any resulting damage. Please review and follow the instructions carefully when sealing the water housings. As such, my Barrier Reef dive, while well within the claimed specifications of a GoPro and very much of the style that the brand has been built on, wouldn't actually be covered by its standard warranty if something went wrong, at least as per GoPro's interpretation. Now, I did actually reach out to GoPro Australia for some clarification on this and heard nothing. Now, that kind of warranty claim might come down to a question of specific proofs, given the way GoPro cameras use sealed compartments for protection. And it may be that GoPro handles these a little differently for Australian consumers. But Australian consumer law would tend to suggest that within reasonable bounds, it should be covered. And that might be a really interesting legal tussle to get into. So what's the short form here? Well, look, 
honestly, it's well worth understanding what your phone or other water-resistant device can theoretically survive, but it's really dangerous to assume that that means it's absolutely waterproof or that the warranty is going to cover you if something goes wrong. 